Honesty is the best policy. In fact, that's how two local bakers run their business. Their delectable desserts and unique sales approach have gained them international attention. This week on Connect, the owners of Poorhouse Pies in Underhill are in our kitchen, showing us how their contributions to the community go far beyond their sweet treats. Connect on Vermont PBS is sponsored in part by the Alma Gibbs Donchin Foundation. Supporting Vermont institutions that support the underserved and promoting the betterment of life for all. Paula and Jamie Eisenberg have created an exceptional experience for customers who buy their baked goods, and it all starts within the walls of their home. Paula and Jamie are joining us in their comfort zone, the kitchen, and ladies, I thank you so very much for being here. Glad to be here. Thanks. Thank you so much. We are going to do a talk and teach today. Sure. You are going to work your magic in the kitchen as we discuss your business model, but I want to start with your appearance on a few good pie places. <laughs> yes. That was a nationally produced PBS program, which has given you mm -hmm. national exposure. How yes. did that come to be? Well, we were contacted by Rick Seaback. He's the producer from WQED in Pittsburgh. And he explained to us that he was doing a show um, going around the country, highlighting pie shops. And he just happened to be on the phone with an old college buddy of his that lived in Williston and said, oh, by the way, I'm doing this new show. Know anybody in Vermont that makes good pies? And the, the guy said, well, I've never been there, but my daughter goes to this pie shop in Underhill. Why don't you contact them? And that was it. And everything else is history, as we say. The rest yeah. is history. Yeah. But it's only just beginning, exactly. in a way, because right. calls have been pouring yes. in from across the country. Mm -hmm. Who have you heard from? Where are some of oh. these people located? <laughs> you know, I don't know where the furthest <laughs> is, um, but a lot of people from the South and Texas and um, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Minnesota. We get Minnesota. a big push from Minnesota. Yeah. So people are traveling from really all over the country. If they're, especially if they're coming to the area, they make a stop with us. And mm -hmm. we, you know, people have called us for directions and we'll say, okay, well, where are you going? <laughs> to, so we know what direction. They say, what do you mean where we're going? We're coming to see you. Yeah. <laughs> so we've become a destination. Yeah. You have become yes. a destination. But we've also, um, people who live in Vermont who have never heard That's of us right. are having people from out of state call them and say you've got to check this place out. Yeah. So, so dare I say now that you're in the key lime light <laughs> sales have <laughs> increased I imagine. Yes, very much yeah. so. By how almost, much? Yeah. I would say almost doubled since yeah. August. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we, I mean the week after the show we definitely were <laughs> We're jamming. I mean, it was unbelievable how much traffic we got. The weather was very good, mm -hmm. and people were traveling. It was, you know, getting close to foliage. And through the whole foliage season, we could, we were really uh, working hard. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> working yeah. hard is an understatement. Yeah, we're working hard. Yeah. It's just the two of you, pretty <laughs> That's much. Right. Yes. yes. Yep. You yep. do have yep. helpers. We were talking a little bit before. Well, you know, when so we have Every somebody that wants to, you know, barter for a pie or, you know, make a little cash, we have them make some boxes or something. But we do all the baking. Yeah. I yeah. think okay. payment in pie is yeah. a fair <laughs> payment by anyone's eyes. People happy with that usually. Absolutely. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Jamie, let's not hold sure. you up any yep. further. Mm -hmm. You go ahead. You start mm -hmm. sure. getting yep. into your magic. Okay. But sure. before we do that, mm -hmm. we want to take a mm -hmm. peek of the clip from your sure. appearance mm -hmm. on a few good pie places. So, mm -hmm. let's go ahead and roll okay. that clip. Sounds good. Now, Poorhouse Pies has a few wholesale accounts, but they also sell their wares in a small structure in the yard beside their house. The shed was an old garden shed we had, um, just kind of kicking around. I'm pretty sure it was Jamie who said, you know, why don't we just put pie in there and have people come and buy it? It's all self-service. There's a bank in there. It's a very old tradition, the uh, farm stand tradition. You, you just uh, honor system. The bank is an old mailbox, yes. <laughs> We keep an eye on things when we're home and uh, when we see a lot of traffic, we bring a lot more pies out and uh, it's pretty much 24-7 uh, business. People, I think they feel a connection, you know, they, this is their pie house and they can leave a note and they can say, this is my little spot now, so. We drove up and you see pie and you see a sign and we walk up and it says self-service and it says open so many days and it has a list of all the pies. We put pie out there and we said pay what you want and people did 
Okay, so <laughs> that clip said you pay what yeah, you want. Yeah, now, right. let's clarify because in yeah. the beginning, sure. there yeah. was a zoning issue. That's right. So right. you couldn't necessarily have set prices. Sell pies. Okay. Right. We were right. naive in the beginning and um, you know we knew we would have to jump through some hoops but we were eager to get started so we started selling pies right away and then pretty quickly it was like well you can't really do it that way you need some zoning <laughs> and permits and things so we had already had customers at that point and we started to build up some energy so instead of shutting down and disappointing people we kept doing the pies but we put a sign in that said suggested donation and people then donated, you know, what they felt they wanted to pay, but you know, we, we gave them the pricing. So we never did it, you know, pay what you want. It was for maybe a month or two, yeah. and then we've been, we've we've set prices. Yeah, since we then. definitely so. set prices. You have to because <laughs> it is a very right. exactly. unique right. business model, and right. you're from mm -hmm. New Jersey originally. So <laughs> yeah. do you think something like this? would work in other states or do you think this sort of speaks to you know, our community? I think it definitely speaks to our community. In, in other places it would have to be very rural with lots of people mm -hmm. home all the time keeping an eye on it. Yeah. Um, but you know in Vermont we have such a tradition of farm stands and you know people you know that are, have to work and they don't necessarily have the time to be doing the service all the time. You know farmers certainly can't be standing around in a farm stand all day long. So we're very much like that where we want to you know still have a quality of life where we can get out and because we don't you know we don't have a regular customer service style. So we do uh, you know stock the pie shed and put pricing on the pies and we have a, a bank that is locked down. You can't just walk away from with the bank and um, it works great here. Mm -hmm. um, would it work in other places? Maybe, maybe not so well. So, All right, yeah. well let's see mm -hmm. what people are stopping by sure. the shed for. Sure. Go ahead yep. and tell us what you were going to start okay. off with today. I'm going to make two different variations of the same pie. So um, this is a pie that we like to do for the holidays and we do in the, the colder months. Um, it's a chocolate ganache, caramel, and toasted almond tart. Which, you know, it's really a pie because it's in a pie shell. But, you know, tarts are usually very thin. This is a little thicker. So it's really just layers of a, a crust. And I'm going to do two different types of crust. Chocolate ganache, caramel, and toasted almonds. I think we are more than happy to hear that. So <laughs> okay. you go ahead. Sure. You start. So I'm going to start with the crust. Doing. Okay. Absolutely. You got it. We're just going mm -hmm. to continue to talk. So sure. we talked about people stopping by the shed. That is the biggest experience because mm -hmm. oh, yeah. you don't ship your product. Right. You want people to come to your home right. to experience mm -hmm. everything you have to offer. That's what the charm is. I think that's that's what people are so mm -hmm. charmed by is that. The shed itself, I mean, it really is, what you saw in the clip, it really is very cute, you know, and, and people come by and they have their picture taken in front of it, and yeah, so it, it people ask us to ship pie, pies all the time, but it would be, it wouldn't be the same. It's very quintessential. So, yeah. Now, yeah. we talked mm -hmm. about your business model, how unique it is. We talked about how it works here in Vermont, but has anyone cheated the system? Have this <laughs> tested your level of trust with your fellow pie connoisseurs? I well, suppose it depends on the day, but um, <laughs> I, you know. We've had a couple yeah, of experiences couple. where we yeah. know that someone yeah. has taken some without paying out yeah. for them. Or we watch them speed away. Yeah. You know? um, but it's, I mean, in six and a half years, we know of yeah. two incidences. Yeah. So. That's not bad. And, and we're guessing it's the same culprit. Yeah. Each, you know, because it happened almost exactly on the same day of the year, and we're guessing high school students on the day, last day of school. <laughs> and, um, you know, so we expect that to happen a little bit, but actually I've been surprised at how few incidences yeah. we've had. I mean, on, yeah. on, it's actually the opposite is that we have people who will put too That's much right. money in there, mm -hmm. you know, because they don't want to come to the house to make change, so right. they'll just leave a 20 for a $16 pie. So. Yeah. And the, we had one experience where <laughs> we had a major theft. Um, major. Five, one, pies. <laughs> five pies. Five pies. <laughs> well, that's significant. There's well, a lot of were, time right. and money that goes into Five cream pies. That. Right. Um, and uh, so we figured it was, you know, the last day of school yeah. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, a we, senior prank. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, or mm -hmm. something. Right. And uh, we posted <laughs> on Front Porch Forum, you know, if you have any idea, if you find any empty pie boxes, yeah. let us know. Right. We're or just trying to figure it out. Right. Or yeah. your child may have. Right. <laughs> it's actually <laughs> happened. There's some of the finished product right. up on the screen yeah. right there. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Nice. And yeah. you do mm -hmm. all sorts of pies. Oh, yeah. What nope. is your favorite to bake? If you had a favorite, Paula, what would be your favorite pie to bake? Well, my favorite pie is, you know, any pie I'm making. I'm, my pies are pretty much your basic fruit pie. 
So, I mean, it's funny that you didn't ask me what my favorite pie to eat. I, that was my <laughs> next question. So Normally you knew where I was going. People ask me with that, that, and it's like, well, I don't eat pie anymore. But um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> the, the craziest I get is I put a, a lattice crust on my pie. Yeah, you know. So yeah, she's an old-fashioned yeah. yes. pie baker. But now, mm -hmm. you do your crust a bit differently. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. How does your crust differ sure. from Paula's, and yeah. what mm -hmm. goes into making sure. a successful sure. crust? Either way, yeah. they both yeah. right. come out beautifully. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Paula makes the traditional pie crust, and so it's basically flour and salt and water, and it has the fats in it. And that's always the big debate with pie bakers is mm -hmm. what types of fats. And yeah. some people are traditional lard, some people do shortening. We do a combination of uh, a little bit more butter and a little bit less shortening. So it's almost a 50 50 mm -hmm. crust. And we get, you know, great flavor. We use Cabot butter. Uh, we get great flavor from the butter, and the shortening makes it flaky and, and workable. And so it's, you know, it took a many, many, many tries to get that crust ratio down. And now it's mm -hmm. a tried and true, you know, we've got it down. And we yeah. make, you know, giant amounts of, of dough all the time. Yeah. I like to, I get, you know, I get antsy, I like the creative process, so I, mm -hmm. I do what Paula calls the eclectic pies, mm -hmm. and so I do all the cream pies, and so those are often a pre-baked pie crust, that's what I'm doing right now, I'm making mm -hmm. a pre-baked graham cracker crumb crust, <coughs> and then chilling those crusts, um, and then filling them. So I make um, a two, several different types of crust, um, a sucre dough, which is basically has some egg in it, gives it a little bit of pliability mm -hmm. and some sweetening, some sugar. So her crust has no yeah, sugar no in sugar. it. Right. Um, and people like our pies also because they often say, oh, it's not too sweet. Yeah. And you know, when you go to the grocery store or a pastry shop, sometimes the, it's over the top with mm -hmm. the sweetness and mm -hmm. people like it that we kind of tone it down a little bit with her pies. My pie is totally over the top, sweet and fat. Sweet, sugar, totally. everything nice, Everything right? you can imagine. Right, right. So this sounds yeah. like a long process, and this is a 26-minute yeah. show, yeah, so no I'm going to be amazed no to see how it no all comes problem. together. Yeah. Let's talk She's about your background. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Baking, mm -hmm. you're no stranger mm -hmm. to the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Poorhouse pies wasn't something that you initially set out to do. <laughs> no. No, it was sort of not. something that, mm -hmm. dare I say, you fell into. Right. That's what why were it's you called poorhouse pies? That's so right. poorhouse pies to yeah, sure. keep you out of the yeah, poorhouse. It, it was definitely tongue in cheek. No pun intended. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So what were you doing leading yeah. up to sure. the development mm -hmm. of your business? Well, I've been a professional chef for a long time. I um, I actually I was a fine artist and I graduated from Rhode Island School of Design and then started working in restaurants in Providence and left that behind pretty quickly and just kept going in the culinary arts. So I went back to school at New England Culinary, came up to Vermont, and then was subsequently hired there as a chef instructor. And I spent almost 10 years there teaching um, all kinds of different curriculum. I have a la carte in my background. So I'm mostly a, a, a savory chef. I, I was trained in pastry, but not much. Um, so uh, after Necky, I went and started opening up uh, the prepared foods departments in local grocery stores, which was now become a big trend. And so I opened City Markets, a prepared foods department there. It was a great project, huge, huge endeavor, and um, spent many years there getting that department sound. And then Healthy Living was transitioning from an older store into the new store that they're in now. And um, since I had just done that experience, I was hired there to help them get the new department up and running there as well. Uh, Lo and behold, things uh, kind of came to a crashing halt in 2008, just like everybody else, and mm -hmm. um, uh, the job ended, let's put it that way. <laughs> and um, it, it was a shock. What it, was it going was through shock. your mind at that yeah. point? Were you yeah. furiously searching for other jobs? Were you looking to hop into a kitchen somewhere and take question. on a chef role? Yeah. <laughs> um, I was still Just working. a moment. In you one minute, will you take that out of the yes. oven? This is okay, what we need. Great. Exactly. I'm <laughs> keeping my eye on the I, I got to keep yeah. baking here. Okay. okay. So, um, <laughs> you know, I knew at that point that I didn't want to do some things like manage large staffs. I had done that in two experiences over eight years, and it was time for me to. I needed to back off from that. It was very, very stressful and a great experience, but I just I knew I didn't want to keep doing that. So, you know, I contacted Necky. They weren't hiring either. You know, because I would have gladly gone back to teach again. And Paula kept pushing me, saying, you know, you love to teach, you love to teach, do that, you know, that's your passion. And, um, but there weren't any jobs, really, at that time, you know. It was a bad time for a lot of, a lot of places. And so 
Okay. We were literally sitting at the kitchen table, joking, kind of not joking, about winding up in the poorhouse. And I don't know, one of us suggested, you know, let's just clean out the garden shed and start selling something. Mm -hmm. We'll sell some pies or something. And mm -hmm. it was one of those moments where we looked at each other and said, wait a minute, that's actually not a bad idea. Yep. Paula had been wanting to open up a, a bakery for years, a mm -hmm. small scale um, bakery, and I was always the one that had the good job and the benefits and all that, and, and I was too scared to do that and didn't have a need. But at that point, we had nothing to lose and mm -hmm. said, you know what? I knew I needed to go back to work to make it happen, but I could find something that was more in my passion. And so that's what we did. We started, we cleaned out the shed and we put some pies out there, put up a sign, and it, the rest is history. So. And you mentioned yeah. the word passion. passion. Okay. No? Still cooking? Okay. Yeah, maybe another. It That's only okay. needs about eight minutes. Okay. That's all right. So. Yeah. We have time. Okay. You right. mentioned I'm the word start. passion. Yeah. Now, when your <coughs> passion becomes your professional way of life, mm -hmm. <laughs> do you lose that passion? Do you feel as though now you're obligated to get up every morning and do this? Um, <laughs> good question. That's a good question. <laughs> I actually have a much different holistic attitude about that. Um, you know, I have loved the work I've done since. You know, I've gone into teaching. I'm sure we're going to get into that. Um, and uh, really love to get up in the morning and do that. I'm not always eager to get on a highway to do it. but. Um, I love what I do, and so I find it my craft, and my it's like artwork to me. It's a creative process, so I don't have the attitude that I have to do it. Um, certainly, we need to make money and you know have a lifestyle, but I never. Um, you could put that right there. Thank yeah, you. Never begrudge that process. Um, it's a joy to do it, really, and so. I do get up in the morning and just hit the ground, and I'll be honest, sometimes I'm in my PJs doing it, and um, <laughs> All the always with a hat right? and an apron, and, um, and uh, it's really, I've never, there's, a, there's so much joy in it that it's, it's not drudgery in any way. That's wonderful. Yeah, I'll do it 24-7 all day long if I need to. And, Sometimes well, I do. <laughs> we're happy that you're doing it right yeah. now in this right, moment, so I can tell you that. So you added the yep. chocolate to the stove. So that's sort of going to come to a boil. Is it going to come to a simmer? No, just warm it. up? I okay. Just, I just made ganache. Okay. And so this is ganache in two different forms. Chocolate it's, and cream, It's right? basically chocolate and cream. Sometimes mm -hmm. you put some butter in there. But I just heated up some heavy cream and uh, put chocolate chips mm. in it and let it sit. And that way the chocolate melts nice and evenly. It's a tempering process. So tempering, it still has its strength. It's not broken apart or, um, you know, kind of um, chunky in any way. So um, this is what the ganache would look like after it's been somewhat chilled. Sure. And this is um, the base for a lot of different things. You can do many, many things with ganache. Um, this would be what the truffles would be made out of. Mm -hmm. And you could whip it and make, make frosting. frosting. Or you could mm -hmm. just pipe it like this as frosting. Um, or you can melt it and use it as a coating or a glaze. So ganache is a real workhorse of, of a lot of professional uh, bake shops and kitchens. Certainly sounds so. like it. Very versatile. Yeah. And very, very, very versatile. delicious, too. So, okay, so I'm going to do two. Uh, I'm going to put this ganache. Oh. Well, actually, I'm going to melt them together because it just makes sense to do that. Okay. So, I'm going to put them So, in. while you do that, yep. mm -hmm. let's get back to you <coughs> talked about your role as a teacher. Yep. You are very involved with the Vermont Food Bank Community Kitchen Academy. Right. What is your role with the Vermont Food Bank? Well, after um, we got the pie business going, I decided to look for work. And um, I really wanted to go back to teaching. So it was really kind of a miracle. I, um, I said that I wanted to be uh, working with a community that really needed job skills. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't want to be the boss anymore. And um, I wanted to teach. And so, boom, there was this job posting for the, a new culinary nonprofit school to teach low income Vermonters um, job skills and help them get work. And so that was starting at the, the um, food shelf in Burlington. And it was an assistant job. So it was like I created this position out of my mind. It was unbelievable. It was like the perfect thing. And so I applied for this job, and the Community Kitchen Academy um, has been going strong ever since. It's a low-income uh, job. It's for low-income Vermonters <laughs> that need job skills to be able to have sustainable careers. And so we teach them how to do everything that a entry-level cook would need to have as far as skill level. If they go into the food service, that's great. We can support them the best that way. But if they get a job selling 
pine cones. It doesn't matter to us. It's you know, it's one of those things that we just want them to be working. And there's some pictures of you. Oh, up on there the I am. Right, right there. So right. that oh, is yeah. at one of the uh -huh. graduation right. ceremonies. Yep. There you are. Yep. Speaking, which you do so eloquently, speaking and baking at the same time. That is a gift. What is the most challenging aspect of your role as a teacher? Because it sounds like a very rewarding. Yep. Sure. Well, aspect, that's easy to answer, actually. Yeah. Uh, making the food is easy. You know, all the food that we use is donated through the Vermont Food Bank. And so that's actually the easy part. Um, the part that's difficult is when a student uh, has goals and then um, has life challenges that get in the way. And they don't yet have the skill set they, they need to be able to navigate through that and still stay successful. And we do everything in our power to enable them to stay in the program and, um, and, and get through that. Um, but sometimes it's just so programmed to hit a snag and say, I can't do this, it's too hard, and, um, and then they bow out of the program. And that's really tough for us because we want to be behind them the whole time and uh, when they just you know kind of fade away, we can't really continue to support them. Sometimes students come back. That's great. And I have had many students that have come back after some hardship and said, no, I got things together. I think the timing's going to be better. Um, let's try it again. And then uh, they will graduate. So, so you've yep. been splitting your time mm -hmm. between <laughs> Poor House Pies and the Vermont Food Bank. Right. That's a lot to tackle <laughs> and conquer. Yeah. And with that, I want to go back to the sure. shed for a moment because yep. the shed is Everybody the, wants to go back to the hub of shed. happiness, right? <laughs> exactly. So in your shed, uh -huh. You have people, it's sort of become a tradition as well, they leave notes yep. for yeah. you. <laughs> little <laughs> love notes, yep. little terms of endearment. Yep. I know that we have a couple uh -huh. photos that yeah. we were able to pull from your Facebook page. Yep. Mm -hmm. Just what people say of how yeah. in love they are with your product. <laughs> what are some of those love letters that? that stand out yeah. in your mind? Well, yeah, like I said in, in the uh, other program, the, we have framed on our wall the one that says, I love you, pie lady, and that's all it says. <laughs> and nobody's ever fessed and no up. No one's ever fessed <laughs> up. And that could be many people. Yeah, so. yeah, but uh, we love that one. But um, people will tell us where they're coming from, uh, especially now. Um, people will tell us what pie they bought and how wonderful it is, and they'll say, uh, my grandmother's bir birthday, she wanted a cherry pie, you guys had one, you know, that kind of thing. But yeah, it's mostly we love you. And, and yeah. then the other one, um, yeah that I love is pie saved my life. <laughs> That's a good one. Well, uh, yeah, and the one, uh, my new, new favorite is one, it's, uh, I put it way up high, it just says, yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. yep. That's yep. it. It's yep. a good t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I thought so, that's yeah. a Vermonter. Vermonter yeah. came in right. and wrote that Short one. Short and well. simple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You sell right out of the shed. That right. is mm -hmm. your main source sure. of income, mm -hmm. but you've also infiltrated mm -hmm. into <laughs> other stores. You're in several yeah. retailers, yeah, yes. grocery mm -hmm. stores as yeah, well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How hard is it to sustain as a local business before mm -hmm. you gain mm -hmm. this national mm -hmm. attention? Mm -hmm. Um, wow, I never really thought about it in those terms. It's mm. not been hard at all. Um, almost all the, all the places that we are in um, came to us. Yeah. So we, we don't really promote ourselves much because True. we couldn't up to a certain point. Mm -hmm. I mean, we are only the two of us, so we don't advertise much and we mm -hmm. kind of got to the max of our production up until recently and we'll be able to do more soon. Um, but all the places we're at, City Market, Healthy Living, Sweet Clover Market, Dover Tea, Jericho Market, <laughs> all of those places came to us. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't hard to be sustainable in that way. And most of them want more from us as well. Now, how did mm -hmm. they find out about you before yeah, good the question. program? Um, <laughs> Word of mouth. Word I of think. mouth. That's yeah. our advertising yeah. has been mm -hmm. word of mouth. Mm -hmm. Plus, we so. have relationships with most of those places. <laughs> you know, like okay, we both worked at Healthy Living and City Market, <laughs> and Dober Tea uh, is owned by my best friend. Um, so it's pretty easy that way. We're, we've been in the community for a long time, so people know what we're up to. You need yeah. those connections, mm -hmm. but right. yep. you ladies are now doing it with the help of friends on your own and mm -hmm. with yep. television appearances. Yep. So that pie is still. <laughs> We're chilling pretty in much the refrigerator. ready to go. Um, I have two pies chilling okay, now, yep. so that's part of the process. Okay. And then this one is the uh, finished product that I made earlier that's all set up and ready to go. So this one's firm, this one, and you know, I like to try different ways of layering. Like with the graham cracker crust, I like to have the 
um, you know, chocolate in the bottom. Yeah, and can we go cut for in? it. All go right, let's it. Yeah. You, why don't yeah. you cut in? Right, I'll, I'll grab cut. the plates for okay. us because you are the master All of right. this. Now, mm -hmm. if <laughs> folks at home, they did miss that original appearance of you ladies on mm -hmm. a few good pie places, they will have an opportunity to see that again. That's going to be Sunday, December 27th at 9 a.m. on our Plus channel, and then Wednesday, December 30th at 11 a.m. On our plus channel. So those sales might spike. You think everybody's done with <laughs> right, their holiday right. eating and everything else. So let's dig in. I'm gonna take a bite. Right. And, and then also, you know, I just want to make sure you, you see that we also make lots of traditional pies. So this is a nice traditional apple pie that, that Paul has made. And we make all kinds of fruit pies as well. And cream pies. It's a little sugar rush there. <laughs> that is delicious. Thank you. So rich. Yeah. Very rich. I'll need a glass of milk with that. But for now, I want to thank you ladies so Absolutely. much for taking the time to join thank us. You, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you, you Paula. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. And thank you to the folks at home for joining us as well. Vermont PBS would like to connect with you and feel free to reach out to us. You can reach us on our website, vermontpbs.org. You can also check out other episodes and extra material at Vermont PBS, our website, vermontpbs.org. We'll see you next time. Connect on Vermont PBS is sponsored in part by the Alma Gibbs Donchin Foundation, supporting Vermont institutions that support the underserved and promoting the betterment of life for all.